listeners and viewers, welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency, Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership, our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors, especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming Senior School Certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-00545 or 080-383-62072 our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng. Our email, education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com. Our YouTube channel, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Our Twitter handle, at Kaduna underscore MOE. Or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Hello, my students and other learners. My name is Ibrahim Zakari. I'm here to teach you history. Our topic of discussion today is British indirect rule in Nigeria. British indirect rule. Before I define it, I want to explain a little. After the partition of Africa, if we say partition, we are aware of uh, sharing of African territories among European superpowers. Nigeria and other territories like Ghana, Gambia, Sierra Leone fell under British colonies. Let me define what is an indirect rule for you to understand. Indirect rule is a system of government by which the colonial officers, if you say colonial officers, we mean the colonialists, the British officials, rule the colonized states. Which area are the colonized states? That is Nigeria or any other African state under British or any other European uh, colonialist. Through the traditional political institutions, they rule the colonized states through the traditional political institutions. If we say traditional political institutions, we are referring to traditional rulers. If we say traditional rulers, we mean the emirs, chiefs, obas, and others. They retain them after the conquest, after the subjugation. They retain them so that they will allow them to participate in the administration of their various area. According to Lord Lugard, it is the rule through the native chiefs who are regarded as integral parts of the machinery of government, with well-defined powers and functions recognized by government and law. 
are not dependent on cap price of an executive officer. This is the definition of indirect rule according to Lord Lagarde. Already we have seen it. It is a system of government by which the colonial officers, that is the British officials or French officials or Portuguese, rule the colonized state through the traditional political institution. After the partition of Africa, that is after the sharing of Africa, African continent, in the late 19th century, the area we know today, Nigeria, or as it were, that is when it was not amalgamated, the various protectorates were not amalgamated, fell under British spheres of influence, became under the control of British government. Origin of British indirect rule. If you say what were the origin of this indirect rule, that is where have they, where have they started this system of indirect rule? In the past, in times immemorial, many rulers in the past practice this indirect rule system. It was carried out in many places in the past. The Romans practiced this indirect rule. The British practiced it in Uganda when Lord Lugard was assigned there and when they failed to control the kingdom of Buganda entirely. So they returned the emperor and allow him to have an active participation in the administration of that area. Shanghai rulers like Sonny Ali, Mali rulers, etc., etc., like Mansa Musa, Mansa Suleiman, even Queen Amina of Zaria, practice this indirect rule to rule their vast area through the local chiefs. In fact, this system had earlier worked successfully in India, where the British colonized them, where the rule had been done through the Indian prince. They felt that their officials were not enough to be assigned to the vast area like India. For that reason, they used the local chiefs, that is the traditional rulers, the prince, to allow them to have active participation in the administration of India on behalf of the British officials, under their full supervision. By 1900, there were three separate independent territories, all of which were under British control. Number one, one was the Niger Coast Protectorate. The Niger Coast Protectorate was created in 1891, which was known as Oil Rivers Protectorate, where British traders and merchants obtained palm oil, which they transported to their country. They called the area Oil Rivers Protectorate. They faced some problem there. Some traditional rulers, they wanted to use when they decided to adopt this system, failed to comply with the instruction of the British officials. They refused to accept British protection. For example, the Oba of Benin, he had problem with 
uh, Consul Philip, when he asked the other to open his kingdom to British traders to come, he refused. He asked the other to accept British protection, he refused. For that reason, there was a problem until when Benin Empire was sacked and the other was deported to Calabar. Another protectorate was the colony of Lagos, which was created in 1861 and ceded to Britain. That is, they become British protectorate. Also, in this area, the British faced a lot of problems. As a result of prolonged Yoruba civil war that was going on, there was the Ijae war against Ibadan. There was another war again, which lasted for almost 16 years. That was the uh, Ikiti Parapo War, where the Ife, Ijesha, and Ikiti uh, came together against Ibadan imperialism. So, despite the fact that the British occupied Lagos as it is protectorate, but they failed to penetrate the interior of Yoruba land because of this prolonged civil war. So they have to intervene. So they intervene and also force the Ikiti Parapo Alliance to withdraw their forces from Ibadan. Another protectorate, that is the third one, was the Royal Niger Company Territory, which was later on declared as Northern Protectorate. In 1906, the whole of southern Nigeria were brought under a single administration. Instead of having one or two protectorates, there was only one protectorate. Lagos Colony and Oil Rivers Protectorate were merged together. They were amalgamated in 1906. Then we had Southern Protectorate, then we have Northern Protectorate. So we had only two protectorate, Southern Protectorate and Northern Protectorate. On 1st January 1914, the two protectorates were amalgamated. Then we have one administration throughout the entire country, instead of having separate, uh, independent protectorate with different administration. Now we have one political uh, entity, one single administration under Lord Lugard as Governor General. Colonial administration in Nigeria falls under two broad sections. We have the central administration and the local administration. Central administration, local administration. The central administration had its set, that is Lagos, that was the capital, Lagos with Lord Legard as Governor General, like to say President. Now we have President, we call him President. He acted as the President. Next to him were the provincial governors who were appointed to help him in the task of 
administering the colony. Lord Lugard was assisted by these governors. They were responsible to him. But he was not the one who selected or appointed them. They were appointed by the colonial secretary in London. And Lord Lugard, despite the fact that he exercised immense autonomous power, he was responsible to the colonial secretary in London. The governors were responsible to him. At the same time, Lord Lugard, or whoever was the governor general, was assisted by two councils, the legislative council and the executive council. The executive council comforts of or was made up of entirely British officials only. Whereby the legislative council composed of British officials, British merchants, and some few Nigerian educated elites who were selected by the governor general to serve under legislative council. These two councils advised the uh, governor general on matters affecting the entire colony. He has a veto power to ignore their decision. That is the reason why I say he exercised immense autonomous power. He can ignore their own decision. Below the colonial administ administration was the local administration, or you call it the local government, if you like, for you to understand. This local administration controlled the district and the division because the colony was divided into small units, referred as districts, and divisions. It was at this level the British adopted the policy of indirect rule. It was at this level that the British officials used the traditional rulers, not at the central level. That was the reason some historians refused to accept that system as an indirect system. It was a direct system. Why? Because the traditional rulers were not allowed to pass, participate at the central administration. They were only allowed to participate at the local level. The native rulers administered their respective areas with the advice and supervision of British officers called the resident. So the resident was the overlord of the entire colonial, uh, distinct traditional rulers assigned at various localities. This policy was proved successful in northern Nigeria, where there were centralized traditional institutions. The indirect rule system was successful in the north. Why? Because the northerners were well acquainted with traditional system of administration. They have the emirs, the Seriki, chiefs, and so on. So when they were asked to be so loyal and answerable, to so these people, there were no any problem. The only problem with them, they accused these traditional rulers as being very oppressive, very rude, whereby it was not their fault. It was the fault of the resident. Why? Because these traditional rulers, they were not independent. 
They dance according to the tune played by the resident. Whatever the traditional rulers passed to their subject, it was from the resident. So it was not their fault. So they lost their credibility and validity in the sight of people. The people hated them. In the eastern Nigeria, it failed because there were no indigenous authorities with clearly defined executive powers. This area, the people, before the arrival of the colonialists, they were not centralized states. They were stateless societies. There were no any ruling dynasty. There were no any ruling dynasty in Igbo land or Niger Delta. So they refused to accept one single person to act as a king. They felt it is uh, a distinct, uh, an act of victimization. So the British, when they realized that these people like an indigenous authorities there with clearly defined executive powers like in the Yoruba land or in Hausa land or other places, they decided to establish a native court under the supervision of warrant chiefs. These warrant chiefs were selected by the residents. If you can speak English fluently, for example, or you are a little bit educated in Western education, you will be selected to act as a warrant chief. Other people will look down on these people. How on earth this very person I know should be my overlord? So they refused to obey the decision of the warrant chiefs. This led to the Abba riots in 1929, where many people were this thief killed. More often than not, the chiefs were in great danger of obeying the residents, as I have explained. They obeyed the residents, and then they will be regarded as oppressors. Why the activities or the policy of the resident was very obnoxious. The result was disastrous, as I have, I have explained. Example, the Abba Women Riot uh, of 1929. What was the function of the traditional rulers in their various area of jurisdiction. The traditional rulers have the power to collect taxes from their various uh, area where they were assigned to administer. They sent some part of the tax to the central administration and return uh, the remaining part for their uh, distinct uh, administrative activities. At the same time, they have to maintain law and order according to the British law and order. On no account should any traditional ruler act contrary to the rules and regulations let down by the British officials. Otherwise, we will be in fish and sent to a distant unknown destination, as it happened in many places here in Nigeria. So, my students, I have an assignment for you. Number one, Explain the meaning of indirect rule. 
explain the meaning of indirect rule system. According to the Lord Lugar's definition, Lord Lugar's definition had his own uh, this thing, uh, definition of indirect rule. So, explain what Lord Lugard means by indirect rule system. Number two, what were the reasons why indirect rule was successful in the North? Why the indirect rule was successful in Northern Nigeria, but was a failure in the South? If I say south, I'm referring to the eastern region, Iboland and the Niger Delta. It failed. What was the reason? It was successful in the north. Quite all right, but failure in the south. Number three, outline the creation of protectorate, the poor amalgamation how three protectorates were created before amalgamation of Nigeria. I will repeat uh, the assignment. Explain the meaning of indirect rule system according to Lord Lugard's definition. Number two, what were the reasons why indirect rule was successful in the north and was a failure in the south? Iboland and the Niger Delta. Number three, outline the creation of protectorate before amalgamation. Outline the creation of protectorate before amalgamation. Mention the protectorate and the date of their creation. That is all I need. If you want to ask any question, or you want to make a comment, or you want to send the assignment you have done, this is my contact number, 070-8420-3260. I'll repeat. 070-8420-3260. Thank you.